Louisiana Beer Reviews looks at Bluebird Bitter Premium XB from Coniston Brewing. Um, Coniston Brewing Company was established, I think, in 2005. Um, it's not a real old company. Now, Bluebird XB combines two of the great themes of ale brewing. Okay, this is what they're saying. The fine tradition of English pale ale is about quaffing, refreshment and complexity, and flavor without, of flavor without alcoholic strength. So England, their tradition is gulping down light, uh, you know, low alcohol ales, like three and a half percent. They say, then throw in the new wave of American hot variety, Mount Hood, with robust citrus aromas, and you have what? Bluebird XB, extra bitter. So we're going to see. Now this is um, higher than what they have in merry old England because it's 4.4% for the U.S. market, but it's 42 over there. And if you look at their website, a lot of their beers are just around 3, between 3 and 4% alcohol. It's bottle conditioned. Um, they say the malt is Maris Otter. There is a barley wine that they make. It's seven and a half percent, kind of a low ABV barley wine, really. Um, this beer gets a good score in Beer Advocate, so they're saying a B. Rape beer is only saying 55 out of 100, but 89 out of 100 for the style, the English, I guess, pale ale. Um, I did have the X, the Bluebird, and I recorded it. Then I had to reshoot it because my recording came out bad with background television noise and I liked it Coniston Bluebird and then someone told me someone from England told me I think it was Jonathan Brown he was saying uh <clears throat> there's a XB there's a uh, one made with a you know extra bitter or whatever and I said oh I've had it but then I did some research and I said I haven't had it I bought this at Dorgnax and I think it was $3.99 for the bottle Okay. So my third experience with Coniston Brewing, and they show a river and a nice nature scene there. It's about 7.30 in the morning, the sun is coming up above the roof, and that oak, huge oak tree, you can see the shadows in the background, so the lighting is not ideal. I see some smoke here. I didn't know what, I was trying to figure out what glass to put it in, and then I said, oh heck, I'll just put it in this schooner glass, or goblet. Okay, probably be good enough, or good. I would like, I, I guess I should have put it in, in a more narrow or brim glass because I would get a thicker head. The head is a little, mm, on the sides it's kind of big bubbles and little bubbles and it's extremely bubbly in the, in the body. I mean, there's a lot of bubble action here. I guess being bottle condition, I mean, they're racing to the top. It's, I would say this color is an amber, so it's more like an amber ale, and there's sediment galore. I mean, pretty big tan chunks, little ones and big ones. So if highly filtered beers are your thing, this is not gonna be your thing. <laughs> right off the bat, it reminded me of these English ales. I mean, when I had the, um, Abbott Ale. I, I, at first I was like, it smells like cellar mold. <laughs> and it's something about the yeast. I mean, these British beers have such an odd to us in America. I live in America. Have such an odd aroma. It is a moldy, strange, turned fruit thing. It does remind me of Abbott Ale. Got some Timothy Taylor, landlord quali qualities. Oh, it just it just smells like um, it's so fruity. Think of mango, apricot. Um, 
all that kind of stuff, none of which is contained in this beer. Just water, barley malt, hops, and yeast. Let's go with the flavor. So the aroma is distinctive, and if you're not used to English beers, oh yeah, and it kind of reminds me of London Pride from Fuller's. It's going to be strange to you. Maybe a little India Ale from Samuel Smith's got some of that in it. Even the taste and the mouthfeel is so quintessentially quintessentially <laughs> English. It even has some St. Peter's qualities. And St. Peter's beers, they have some really dank cellar mold qualities. Maybe it's the Stone Yorkshire Squares, which do that. Um, I find Robinson's The Trooper from do 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 um, That um, wasn't as much of that. You know what I mean? That wasn't as much of that, the cellar mold and whatnot. But it may have been tailored more for the U.S. market to um, kind of factor out those attributes. Well, the mouthfeel is, is, is light to medium, but more on the light side. It's wa more watery than I expected. And it's quaffable, like they say. You could go up this thing down like mad, like you've gone totally mad. But um, the flavor... The flavor... I must say... The flavor is quite watery, but you do detect. I'm detecting peaches, like kind of those red peaches. It's really weird. But they say the Mount Hood hops in the citrus, so I guess some sweet, very mild bread. The finish is mm, only semi-dry. Hmm. This is really hard to pin down. Oh, there is some little chunky sediment at the bottom. Little caked sediment coming right loose. I bet this is going to cloud up. Mm. You can see that the head would have been pretty thick on a narrower brim glass. It's sort of spongy. It's off-white, almost cream-colored. I see tan chunks within, you know, in the head of foam. The beard did cloud up, becoming more gray. And more yeasty. Almost, almost, you almost pick up a banana character in the yeast, but you don't. Well, it ain't the greatest thing. I wouldn't pay $3.99 for it again, but uh, it's something to try because it's really strange. Um, I guess it's good. I'll say it's a B. Is it excellent? No, but it's good. So. Laissez-les bon temps roulé, a good, if not unusual, beer. <coughs> <coughs> hey, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to New Orleans! <laughs>